Happy World Carnivorous Plant Day. Today I'm going to show you how I grow these plants in this place. The indoor and outdoor humidity is extremely low here. Um, so the obvious answer would be to keep all these plants in a terrarium, but I didn't want to do that because I tend to take better care of things if I can share my living space with them. This way I pass by them every single day and I get to see if they need water or if I've got a pest issue, I can catch it quickly. Um, so I decided to try acclimating them to my in normal indoor humidity. You saw just now it was at 26 or 27% and it tends to vary usually between 20 and 40%. Um, so in order to acclimate into that, I bag my plants. These are all fresh divisions, um, less than a month old but I, I treat new plants the same way that haven't already been acclimated. Um, they get bagged, uh, and once I start noticing a bit of new growth forming, I'll chop the corners of the bag, wait a little while, make sure they don't look water stressed. Um, I, I tend to handle them a bit uh, to get a sense for how um, well hydrated they are. The, Pitchers are extremely rigid when they're well hydrated. They're very brittle, um, but if they are starting to get water stressed, you'll before they look like they're wilting, they'll tend to soften a little bit, and that'll be the first sign that they're water stressed, and you need to back off a little bit and uh, increase the humidity again so they can do more root development uh, before trying to drop it again. And just do that slowly, and it varies a lot from uh, plant to plant. The uh, tougher hybrids like Heterodoxa by Minor, which I have a bunch of divisions of in here, and Tequila, and I've also got um, Heterodoxa by Ionese over there, tend, tend to adapt pretty quickly. Others um, can take months. So yeah, these ones, I'll uh, since they've been in here for a month or so now, I'll start lowering the humidity. Um, but, you know, other plants like Parva or Neblinae, I'll take several months. Um, to act. Even with acclimation, some of your older leaves are going to suffer. This uh, is Perparacens. Uh, this is a particularly slow-growing species. Um, so this right here and this right here is new growth. This has been acclimated over the course of several months because it is so slow-growing. Um, this is an old picture. This looked nice at the start of acclimation, but the old pitchers just don't never quite handle the humidity, the low humidity well. You can see it's all dried up here. That most of the old pitchers will do something like that, um, but new pitchers will form and they'll be much more resistant and last a lot longer in the low humidity than the old pitchers. So I'll let this develop several more new pitchers before I start chopping off the old ones. The preferred potting medium I use for all my plants is um, this stuff right here. It's uh, flu ball or three parts fru flu ball stratum mixed with uh, one part of uh, pumice. You can use perlite too, but it doesn't mix as uniformly um, with the flu ball. Uh, one of the nice things about it is you can reuse it. Um, it doesn't, it's not, it's in, inorganic media, so it doesn't break down like the traditional sphagnum pumice mix uh, that most people would use for their plants. Um, the, uh, but I do recommend top dressing it with live sphagnum moss. So you can see most of my plants have live sphagnum on them. And it, it's this um, media is extremely good at wicking water up from below. So as long as you keep a bit of water down below, it'll be able to wick it up to the top of the pot and um, allow the sphagnum to grow, especially if you allow the sphagnum to establish in high humidity while you're acclimating the plants. I f yeah, do you, are you fussy little plants? Are you fussy little plants? I almost always water my heliamphora from above, um, and I make a point to fill the pitchers with water and let the water run down through the media. Um, this does a couple things. It makes sure in these taller pots that the um, sphagnum uh, gets moistened because uh, it can occasionally have trouble wicking all the way up in, in taller pots. 
Um, the other thing it does is it rinses nutrients out of the uh, pitchers and out of the media, um, so it'll avoid uh, mineral burn or help avoid mineral burn. I use two rows of uh, four foot length, 40 watt approximately LED uh, grow lights above my plants. They're spaced about 10 inches apart and my shelves are about 20 inches apart. So that gets you an idea how, how things are spaced. And uh, you don't need to follow that exactly, but the plants will tell you if they're getting enough or too much light. So here's an example of a plant that's getting adequate light. This is Heterodoxa by Minor. Um, you'll notice that the Nectar spoon is quite large. I can almost fit my finger in it. Um, it's well differentiated from the pitcher top. There's a, like a neck down right here before it widens back out again to the next nectar spoon. And the plant is uh, has some red blush to it. Um, some plants will, will blush under it. Other plants will stay green. Um, it just depends on the species. But for comparison, here is the exact same clone. Uh, a division um, and you can see this 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 division is still establishing so it's looking a little junky um, but you can see this leaf here was was uh, developed while this plant was getting too much shade um, you see how the uh, the opening of the pictures flared much wider um, the nectar spoon is very reduced and not well separated from the top of the pitcher, the edge of the pitcher, and the um, other thing you'll notice is that the uh, body of the pitchers holds much less fluid. Um, they're, they'll narrow down the body of the pitcher and widen out at the top to maximize the amount of light they collect if they're not getting enough. For fertilizer, I use Dynagro Foliage Pro currently, but I've also used Dynagro Grow and uh, Maxi. Uh, all of them I mix at about 100 parts per million and uh, fill the pitchers slightly, overfill the pitchers so that some drains out through the vent and uh, the roots get a bit of, the roots and the sphagnum get a bit of fertilization as well. Every hybrid that I've attempted to grow this way has been very successful, um, but the pure species have been a little more hit and miss. Um, the ones that have done really well for me are McDonald A. This particular plant I've grown since it was a small juvenile. Um, it grew very slowly until it started growing mature pitchers and then really picked up steam uh, and it's started to get uh, multiple growth points. Um, another plant that's done very well is Parva. And this one's a little surprising because it has a reputation for being a little finicky. Um, it uh, this it's been very robust this particular clone anyway um and divides and makes new growth points rapidly two plants that have been a little more challenging to grow uh in these conditions are pulcella and ex appendiculata um, now both of these plants have shown significant improvement in recent months um, because i've been keeping them in deeper water and top watering more frequently, and they both seem to respond positively to that. I hope this video has served as inspiration to give Heliamphora a try if you haven't already, um, and maybe shown that they're not quite as difficult as their reputation would have you believe. My Instagram handle will be in the description, so feel free to contact me with any questions about what I'm doing or if you just want to chat about plants. Um, thanks for watching. It's not a surprise that gardeners, educators, and scientists are fascinated by these unique plants. The International Carnivorous Plant Society, or ICPS, not only love these plants, but welcomes growers just getting started all the way through professional scientists. The ICPS even started an annual World Carnivorous Plant Day to celebrate them. The free online event is held the first Wednesday of May. Take a look around our website and you'll find historic documents about carnivorous plants, growing guides, free educational resources, and more. Have questions? Ask!
We don't bite, but our plants do.